Did you know that there is a way to explore other planets on Google Maps? Well, I didn't until recently, and that might be because there are very specific parameters to go there. So first off, you have to be in globe view instead of normal view, but you also have to be in satellite mode. And once you have these parameters filled, you have to zoom all the way out, and then you will see the list of planets you could explore. All of these planets are the rocky planets because obviously you can't really see the surface of the gas giants because they don't have one. And so in this video, we are going to be exploring these planets, dwarf planets, or even the moon and investigating one or two features that I find interesting about that planet. So the first planet up is Mercury. So as you may know, Mercury is the smallest planet. Sorry, Pluto, you're no longer a planet. And so here it is. And something that I find really cool is just how detailed you can actually get. You can zoom in pretty far and see a lot of detail. Of course, it's not going to be as detailed as Earth, but it's still crazy that we can view other planets in this level of detail. Imagine if they had this kind of technology, say, a hundred years ago. And so looking around Mercury, one feature that my eyes were immediately drawn to was this light spot up here. And this light spot is called Caloris Planitia. And something cool about this planet view that you can do is you can actually click on the feature and you can see information about it. And so you can see it, the type is Planitia, which means a plane. And it also shows you the name origin. So Caloris Planitia actually means hot plane. And this surface temperature is the hottest near the position. This is because this part of the surface is almost always facing the the sun. But what is the Caloris Planitia? Well, this is actually a large impact crater formed by a meteor. And this is actually one of the largest impact craters in the solar system. It takes up around 15% of the entire surface area of Mercury. And it is assumed that this impact basin is actually fairly young, forming around 3.8 to 3.9 billion years ago. Now that doesn't sound young, but it's younger compared to the surrounding areas. This can be seen in how there are much fewer impact craters on top of this impact basin than there are in the surrounding. So as you can see, there are still quite a lot. Sorry if you have trypophobia, but compared to the surrounding landscape, there are much less. Now, here's a fact that I find pretty crazy. If we go to Caloris Planitia's antipode, basically the complete opposite side of the planet, you can see that there is hilly terrain with, again, fewer impact craters than the surrounding area. And it is assumed that the way this was formed was from the same meteor that formed Caloris Planitia. However, this is on the complete opposite side of the planet. How could that be possible? Well, scientists have hypothesized that seismic waves all the way from the meteor that formed Caloris Planitia traveled through the middle of the planet and ended up on the complete opposite side, which created deformations and formed this hilly terrain. And I just think it's crazy that something on the complete opposite side of the planet impacted the other side. But that's all we are going to be looking at for Mercury today. Now, let's head over to Venus. Now, Venus actually has worse imagery than Mercury does because of its extremely thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide and other acidic gases. And so if you zoom in, it almost looks like pictures you could see of the sun, you know, with dark spots and light spots but this is actually a rocky surface. And so what feature on this planet am I going to be talking about? Well, it's not the dark spots, it's actually the light streaks. And once you notice these light streaks that are going across the planet, they become very apparent. And so what are these light streaks? Well, these light streaks are actually rift zones. And this may make you wonder, how can these possibly be rift zones? You see, rift zones on Earth are often formed on the edges of tectonic plates when they are pulled out of each other. And Venus actually doesn't have tectonic plates. Although a study in 2023 suggested that they may have in ancient times, they do not today. So how did these rifts form otherwise? Well, Venus's geology differs from Earth greatly. You see, Venus lacks an asthenosphere. An asthenosphere is essentially the layer of Earth that the tectonic plates sit on top of, which makes them able to move around freely. And so because Venus lacks this asthenosphere, it is suggested that the reason these rift zones formed is actually because of the movement of magma to the surface. You see, when magma rises, it actually lifts the lithosphere or the layer of crust up. This eventually means that it will rift because there's not enough rock to support that. And once the magma moves away, 
Then these layers of rock that are now split apart will fall back down. And this has created the hundreds and hundreds of rifts we can see here. And if you look all around the surface, you can see many of these rifts. And this is due to the high volcanism and also the movement of magma on Venus. But that is all for Venus. Now we are going to skip Earth and the International Space Station, and we are going to move to the Moon. Now, the Moon has the highest quality satellite imagery we have seen so far, and this makes sense. It's, of course, closest to the Earth, so we've had a lot more things that could photograph it in higher quality. And the Moon has many interesting features that we are not going to be able to cover in one video. So if you want to see me make a separate video on just the Moon, comment below. But one thing you'll notice when looking at the Moon is this giant dark spot. And so, what is this? Well, this entire dark area is known as Oceanus Procedarum, or the Ocean of Storms. And it is also assumed to be an impact basin, but it is actually not confirmed. And it is made up of many different impact basins, such as Mare Imbrium. Mare just means sea, so Mare Imbrium, Mare Nubium. And all of these other impact basins make up this dark spot. And the reason it's dark is because it is assumed that lava filled these seas and made it dark. And this entire dark area is actually the third largest impact basin in our solar system. And that is just crazy to think about when you consider how small the moon is. I mean, it is around 1,000 kilometers in diameter less than Mercury and significantly less than Earth. But that is not the only feature we are going to see on the moon. You see, if we go over here to the Sea of Tranquility, and we go to the southwestern section of it, we find this area of, oddly enough, higher quality imagery. And the reason for this is that this is actually the location of the Apollo 11 moon landing, the first moon landing. So if we go to Tranquility Station here, and we zoom all the way in, we can see the Lunar Module Eagle right there. And I just think it is super crazy that we can see one of the only signs that humans have ever touched down on the moon in this high quality of imagery on Google Maps. But that is all for the moon. Now let's move on to Mars. Now Mars is probably one of the most geologically interesting planets. You see, it has the largest mountain, it has the largest valley, it is assumed to have the largest impact crater, and so there are just so many things on Mars that are the largest in our solar system. And so we are going to be going over the largest mountain, and many of you may be familiar with this. And once you see it on the surface, it is very noticeable. Now, I know this says Olympus Rupees here, but that is just some cliffs that are on Olympus Mons, so I don't know why it appears from so far away. But if you zoom in a bit farther, you can see that it says Olympus Mons. Now, keep in mind, this entire section of a shield volcano is around the size of Poland, and this mountain is actually two and a half times taller than Mount Everest, coming out to be 13.6 miles tall. So how did Olympus Mons form? Well, Olympus Mons is a shield volcano that formed similar to how many shield volcanoes on Earth form. One example of a shield volcano on Earth that is very similar to Olympus Mons is Mount Mauna Kea in Hawaii. So basically, it started with a large lava vent that lava flowed out of, and this lava just kept spewing over and adding to the higher and higher mountain. But the reason this mountain got so big is how Mars differs from Earth. Mars Mars has lower gravity than Earth, which means that there were less forces acting on the magma as it was flowing out, which means that more magma could flow out, and also the lava vent itself could become bigger. And finally, one other factor contributing to the size of Olympus Mons is the fact that there are no tectonic plates on Mars. This means that the hot spot, basically the area of weaker surface that lava can flow through, stays in the same spot which can go to these volcanoes higher. This is different than say the Hawaiian Islands where the crust is moving which is forming many different islands. But that is all for Olympus Mons. Now let's move on to our second geologic feature on Mars. This is Mariner's Valleys, named after the Mariner 9 rover that landed... Wait, is it a rover or is it just a space car? Oh, okay. This is 
This is Mariner's Valley, named after the Mariner 9 spacecraft that first took a picture of this valley. And unfortunately, it's kind of broken up by weird imagery here. But as you can see, it goes all the way from around here to all the way over here. And placed on a map of Earth, specifically the US, you can see truly how large these valleys are. They are more than 3,000 kilometers long. And so, of course, this begs the question, how did these chasms form? Well, these valleys formed from a multitude of processes. Well, the first process is known as isostatic uplift. And this occurs when extremely heavy glaciers that are pressing up against the landscape all melt, which causes the layer that has experienced this high amount of pressure to actually go up. However, after a large amount of volcanism in the area that experienced this uplift, it caused too much pressure on the landscape, causing this section of the crust to collapse into the valleys we see today. And then with a combination of erosion and landslides and stuff to farther enlarge these valleys, it has created the true size of these valleys we see today. And so that is all for Mars. And now after Mars, there are many different moons of mainly Jupiter and Saturn. There's also Ceres, which is a dwarf planet, but we are only going to be looking at a few of these moons. One moon that we are going to be looking at that I find extremely interesting is Io. Now something you immediately notice when you get to Io is the weird yellow and orange color that this moon has. And the reason for this is the high amount of sulfur that is on the moon's surface caused by extremely high amounts of volcanism. And so what feature are we going to be looking at here? Well, we are going to be looking at this large orange section here that to me kind of resembles the eye of the Sahara on Earth. And so what is this? Well, this is actually a volcano named Pede. And so this giant red area we see is known as a lava plume and the red color is caused by the degassing, essentially the escaping of gases from sulfur and sulfur dioxide. And most of the time these plumes are formed they are very temporary. However, this massive plume is seemingly permanent. And this is because of the almost constant flow of lava into Pede's crater here. And even though you can't really see it in its low quality state here, there is actually a source of constant lava flow. And something else you may notice about Pele is this interestingly shaped mountainous feature right here. And this is known as Danube Plenum. And yes, it is actually named after the Danube River. The Danube River is one of the places that Io cr actually crossed in mythology. And this Danube Plenum is a mesa. And this mesa juts up from the landscape but it also is rifted, creating this giant canyon you can see here. And yet again, this rift is not formed due to tectonic activity, it is formed due to volcanism again. And of course, this volcanism is from Pele. And so that is all for Io. And actually, we are going to be skipping the other moons here, and we are going to immediately go to Pluto. Now, as you probably know, Pluto is extremely far away from Earth. It is around 3.33 billion miles away from Earth. And this means that only one space probe the New Horizons has, has ever photographed Pluto, which means, as you can probably see, if we go to the side that it hasn't photographed, there is terrible, terrible imagery. But of course, what can we expect from something that's 3.33 billion miles away from Earth? And don't even talk about the Southern Hemisphere. But the place that we can see is still extremely cool and in surprisingly high quality, I think. And so what is notable about Pluto? Well, you probably already see it. It's gotta be this giant white section here. Well, this is known as the Tombow Regio, also known as Pluto's heart, apparently because of its shape. I can't really see it unless they mean a real human heart. But anyways, it was actually much, much harder to find out information on how this formed mainly because no probes have ever landed on pluto and come back to earth for us to study it but we can assume we have this region here named sputnik planitia or the sputnik plane and this region is assumed to be made up of nitrogen ice you see pluto is so far away from the sun that ice can form out of not just water but gases such as nitrogen and so this layer is completely covered in nitrogen ice, and you may notice how it's much smoother than the surrounding landscape. 
and this is caused by constant resurfacing, also known as convective resurfacing, of the surface. What happens is that the movement of materials constantly causes new ice to flow on top of this landscape, which essentially fills in any holes that may be here. And this convective resurfacing actually suggests that Pluto may be geologically active, but that is all we are going to be exploring in today's video. If you guys would like to see any longer videos exploring any other features, especially the moon, then comment below. But I hope I was able to surprise you guys that there was a way to explore other planets on Google Maps. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.